Hi, uh, so this is a, a more in-depth tutorial on how to create weapons and items for the survival kit. Uh, due to the fact that I'm not very good at writing, it's a lot easier for me to do videos like this. So I'll just get started. So to create a weapon, first thing you want to do is go under your character, go down to camera, and under weapons here, you want to right click and create an empty game object. Name this whatever you want. Then you want to drag in your weapon model underneath this. Position this so that it's in front of the camera someplace. You can sort it out yourself really. But I'm going to go ahead. Actually, I'll do this first. Then you want to go under your body, go under your skeleton, uh, go all the way down it until you get to. Uh, what am I looking at? Right shoulder, yeah, right shoulder, right arm, right forearm, then underneath your right hand, you'll find, you want to, or you want to add your weapons in here, they don't have to be under a game object, just underneath your hand, position your, another version of your weapon model, so that it, so that it fits the animations, these ones just now, if you're using animation supply, that's how they fit, so you just position it like that. Then you go to your. I'll just delete this and get it out of the way. So on your your game object you created, you want to add the weapon script as well as the weapon sway script. Also add yourself self an audio source. Uh, before we do that, before I forget to do it anyway, what we'll do is we go to the weapon handler game object here. In weapons, just add a new one. So you would just type three there or whatever. Then it opens up here. Name your weapon, name it Enfield or whatever, whatever you're naming it. Then drag in your weapon model. It says weapon model, but just drag in that game object to it. Then that's that set up. And then for the settings in here, you want to go, well, drag in your camera here first, which is just camera right in there. Then you've got graphics and sound. So we've, I'll just hide all these quickly, just get them out of the way. So then we've got. So we got the barrel, which is just an empty game object set at the end of the gun. Just show you that quickly. So that's just an empty game object set at the end there. Then we've got all the different sounds here, fairly self-explanatory. Destroy delay, that is for this down here, for when you spawn bullet holes where you shoot. That's how long they survive. And then we've got Fire animation, tick this if you've got one, tick this if you've got a reload animation. Then you've got these set up here. So if you shoot grass, it will play one of these sounds. It will also spawn one of these bullet holes that you stick in here. So you can stick particles, anything you want in there when you shoot stuff. Then that's all the different ones there. If you want me to add any more of these in here, just message me and I'll do it. I'll also probably make another tutorial on how to do that. And then we've got weapon stats here. So we've got the range of the weapon, uh, clip size and current ammo. You don't actually have to set that up here. That's done later on in the item, but you can if you want. You've got reload time, fire interval. That's how, how long it takes before you can fire another bullet. And you've got your fire mode here. Fairly self-explanatory. We've got damage per bullet. We've got, right, these ones. This is number of shots in burst. That's how you've set it on burst mode, that's how many bullets it'll fire. And we've got spread factor and number of shotgun bits. That spread factor is for your shotgun. And it might also be incorporated into uh, rifles later on if people want it to be. So you just set that up, that's how much it spreads. And you've got number of shotgun bits, that's how many raycasts will fire out for the shotgun. And we've got zoom settings, you can change your FOV. Uh, you can change how fast it zooms in here, but you've got to be careful because if you change this, you'll need to also change the zooming position. A good way to set up the zooming position is hit toggle aim right here, go into game. Uh, you won't be able to do this until you've got the item set up, but I'll just show you how to do it just now. Pick up your gun. Since you've got toggle aim on, you can press escape, bring the mouse over, click on over here so it doesn't affect the game anymore. Then you can just change all these values in here. 
Now depending on what smooth time it is, this will change. Just watch, because if I... I'll just set that back. So if I change this to like a faster value, 6, you can see it actually it moves. Which is really annoying, but that's just how LORP works. It doesn't quite go there. And since it's so like up in your face, changing it makes a big difference. So whenever you change this, just say what I would want it to go a bit faster. You have to remove this back to the center again. Then in here we've got the recall settings. These three settings here are for when you shoot, the gun will move. Well, we've got. I'll just say this first. We've got the camera kick. That when you shoot, the camera will kick up. You can set that to whatever you want. Uh, then we've got recall position. So when we're not zoomed in, we take its position and we just move its Z back a bit so it jerk the gun jerks back. Then we've got the zoomed recall position. You would just take your recall position that you've got set up here and put it in there. You might want to change it though if you want. And make it go back a bit. And then these three here, they just determine how fast it moves back to your original thing. The rotate speed isn't used anymore, but it's still there just in case I feel like adding it back because it was a bit buggy before. It means I added it so the gun would recoil up uh, by rotating, but the camera kick works for that as well. With the rotating, it made it look more realistic, but it also made the gun clip through the camera. Once I find a good way to stop that happening, I'll re-add it back in. So you've really only got to worry about those. Then you've got third person settings here. Uh, you set its weapon type. I've only got rifle and pistol set up at the moment. Uh, melee might be in when it's released, it might not. But that just determines what animations it picks. Then we just drag in the animator. You drag in your weapon model, which is underneath your game object, the model of it. Then you also drag in the third person weapon model, which is the one underneath your hand. Once you've done that, third you can change the barrel position for third person. Uh, for realism sakes, I've got it attached to the third person gun, but uh, oh wait a minute, maybe, maybe I don't. Oh no, I do. Okay, yeah. For realism sakes, I've got it attached there, but you might want to. Actually, looking a bit weird. It should be down there. That's weird. I don't know why it was up there. Anyway, for realism's sake, you might want to have it coming out the gun. But if you want it to work properly and aim where you're actually looking, have it coming out the camera. That's probably the best way to do it. And then we'll go back to our gun. And that's all. That's the weapon script done. Then we've got the weapon sway script. We've got the move amount and move speed. So when you move your mouse quickly, the gun will slowly catch up with it depending on what settings you've got. Then we've got animation settings here. So we've got the, the body animator. Uh, so we just drag it in there. And now the walk right position. Basically all these positions here. The right position. You want to probably best to keep this the default position. But you might want to have it different sometimes. That's where the walking animation will start. So I'll start here, then I'll move down and to the left. That's how this works, at the speed of 5. We've got it set up just to the exact same, but different speeds for each one. So I'll show you how that works. So at the moment, it's default position. This is default position. When we move, it will move to the left position and move back. If I was to say decrease this, or decrease it, whatever I did. Now it's going to move way across there. That's just an example. So that's how that works. You also want to put this on the weapon layer, or if it's the weapon layer is not there, create a, a layer called weapon. And then on the weapons game object here, it's got a camera, and this only, this only shows the weapon, meaning it doesn't go through walls. Uh, once that's done, once you've got actual all the weapons set up, next thing you want to do is create an item. So you drag your weapon model into the scene, add yourself a box collider, a rigid body, tag it as item, and then you add the dropped item script, set up the gun's name, make sure the the object's name and this is exactly the same, as well as the exact same as the gun, the gun name, 
that you've got set up. You've got the item description, then you've got the item type. Sorry about that, my mic cut cut it out there for some reason. But the item type here, so we've got all different item types. So if it's a weapon, when you use it, it'll activate the weapon. And if you set it as melee weapon, it does the exact same. Uh, except it doesn't show the ammo on a melee weapon. That's why it's a separate thing. Then we've got it. If it's an ammo type, uh, when we reload, it'll look for this item and remove from that. We don't want that. Then we've got crafting material. That's used for crafting. The inventory will look through it and find if it's a craft material or not. Buildable object. That's used for the building system. Food and drink. It's all fairly self-explanatory. Then we've got the item value here. So when we uh, add the item to how many do we need when we pick it up. So for guns, it's going to be one. Just when you pick up a gun, you want five of them. I don't know. Then we've got clip size and current ammo. This is where you set that up. So we change. Oh, you just change that to whatever you want. So if we pick up the item, it'll. it'll its clip size will be eight, and how many ammo it currently has. And we've got ammo type here. Uh, we've got rifle and pistol set up just now. Uh, I'll need to add in more later on though. So what we do is if it's. If it's a rifle, and we make it use the rifle ammo, if you're setting up an ammo get, uh, item, you would set it also to that. So it would look through and find the right type of ammo. So then we've got feed and drink amount, that's just self explanatory. When you when it's food or drink, I'll add on different ones of those. Food can also put up both of them, and so can drink. Then you've got stackable as well if you want it to be stackable. Then what you do with this object, oh, what have we got here? I have no idea. No idea what program that is. I'll ignore that. Strange. So, oh, <sighs> Kyle's it has been updated. I don't give two shits. Okay, then uh, we go to in in survival FPS get a folder. Go to inventory. Go to resources. Then we drag the item into here, creating a prefab like this. Oh, make sure it's tagged as item as well. I don't know if I mentioned that. Then what you want to do is create an item icon and set it to Sprite 2D and UI and make sure it's named again exactly the same as the gun. And that is everything set up. It should be anyway. So once you've done all that, you'll be able to go in game. Run on over to the gun. Pick it up. Drag it to your hotbar, press the key, zoom in, zoom out, go in third person, aim, rest, run, do whatever with the gun. It's all set up and nice and done. And also, while I'm here, through the prone in that I made, I can actually do it. I forgot the key for it, so we'll go. Animation's pretty shit, but that's my first attempt at animating character anyway. But it works. So, thanks for watching. And I hope this helps making items and weapons easier. Thank you for watching.